that slew kings and the enemies of God, the tongue that converted sinners, that drove the devil back into his place in hell, the tongue that transformed the world, spoke only of Christ. This is the tongue that is the greatest instrument of that God used inside of Anthony. It's corrupt. And also we have here, <clears throat> so we read in this gospel, that those who do and teach the word of God, these are the great ones. And so the St. Anthony is the greatest of all the preachers, so much so that in Italy, where there are saints after saint after saints, when you say the name saint, you say, well, there's St. Saint, uh, saint Joseph, and there's St. Saint, uh, saint, uh, John Bosco, and the Saint this, and so many thousands of saints. But if someone says, Il Santo, that is, the saint, it refers only to one man, and that's Anthony. Anthony is a saint of saints. So he only lived 36 years on this earth. He was only a priest for about 10 to 12 years. He preached for only 10 years. And that preaching, he transformed the world. And so he is one of the truly great ones. And of course, in Anthony also, throughout the whole world, people call upon him when things are lost. And remember also that, that we call upon Anthony whenever you lose your car keys, whenever you lose anything, you call upon Anthony. And we ask many times the Indians, why do you like Anthony better than all the other saints? And Indians are very practical. They simply say, because he delivers. The other saints are unreliable. You pray to them, you don't know what you're going to get. But Anthony delivers, Anthony delivers, and we like what delivers, so we love Anthony. Anthony, the church is in Anthony. And also our simple little children in Singampari, they have that way, we always, in Singampari, they used to say, well, what, what, what is the Blessed Sacrament? The Blessed Sacrament is the true presence of St. Anthony. <laughs> no, but the true presence of the body and blood and soul of Jesus Christ. But they love Anthony. So Anthony had a great power, and Anthony converted many saints. And Anthony also, in his preaching holes, when, when many times, many miracles of Anthony, and Anthony commanded the animals, the, the, the donkeys, to kneel down in front of him. Instead of him getting on his donkey in order to go to be able to, to leave, the donkey recognized that Christ was inside of him, and therefore the donkey knelt in front of him. Let him know that you have not yet made your thanksgiving, so go back and do your thanksgiving. And then also Anthony preached to the birds. I mean, preached rather to the fishes. St. Francis preached to the birds. He preached to the fishes. And by preaching to the fishes, he converted the people of Turin. And so that, it, so that and he would not stop the preaching of the word of God. And that many times he brought many, many souls to God. And so in any case, the preaching is most important. It is the great work of the priest, the great work of our church. And then so a few considerations here on the epistle of this mass of the great feast of St. Anthony. And that, that, uh, that what does our Lord say? I uh, St. First Sermon. There was an old priest who would come to preach a sermon to priests. And nobody wants to preach before a priest, because remember, if you're preaching in front of priests, you preach in front of priests. I mean, that was the wrong point. That was a bad quote. That was stupid. I would have said this. You idiot. That's wrong. This is wrong. That's how you preach to priests. So no priest ever wants to preach to other priests. And so all the priests are gathered together around St. Francis. And there was an old wise priest supposed to come and give the sermon, preach to the priests about being holy, about becoming saints. And the, and the old priest got sick and didn't show up. And so therefore they said, we need somebody to preach to the priest, and nobody would do it. And there was Anthony, who was 26 years old, and he would preach his very first sermon. He was a newly ordained priest, and nobody knew him. He had just arrived in the boat, because his boat, remember, he wanted to go from Spain to Africa in order to be martyred. A trip of only a few miles. But the wind blew to Spain, blew the ship from, instead of going to Africa, across the Straits of Gibraltar, only about 30 miles, the ship, the ship blew, was blown by the winds all the way to Italy, 2,000 miles away. The ship got blown off course. He wasn't able to go that short trip. When he arrived in Italy, the unknown Francis, the new Franciscan, he was there. He said, if you're a priest, you'll get up and preach. So he preached his very first sermon. And he began being very nervous, preaching in front of priests, but then he forgot about his audience. And he saw only Christ. And he preached Christ. And in his very first sermon, he converted wicked priests. In his very first sermon, he got priests to go to confession. He got priests to repent of their sins. He got priests to overcome their pride. He got priests to, be, to, to, be, to, to really become saints. 
And hence he is the priest of priests, the saint of saints. He received the most special power. And so in any case here, the priest of St. Anthony, in the priest of St. Anthony, we consider the, 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 the St. Paul letter to Timothy. Dear beloved, I charge thee, says St. Paul to the very young Timothy. He was young, like Anthony was. And he said, let them not despise your youth. You are very young, but you are an apostle, Timothy. You are very young, but you are a priest of God. And you must not let them despise your youth, but go out and fulfill your duty as a priest and bishop of God, as a minister of God. And therefore, says that St. Paul in his old age, speaking to the very young Timothy, he will take his place. Dearly beloved, I have charged thee before God and Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead, by his coming and his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, entreat, rebuke in all patience and doctrine. We must rebuke in patience and doctrine. We have to say the truth, in season and out of season. I was born 49 years ago, and it was out of season. And it's still out of season now. The Catholic faith is out of season. The Lord Jesus Christ is out of season. The Catholic Church is out of season. The divine truth is out of season. It's not in this year. It's like fashions. What was in last year is not in this year. And the Lord Jesus Christ, those that hate the Catholic Church anyway, is always out of season. It is out of season for the Catholics. It is out of season for the traditionalists. It's out of season for those that are supposed to be members of Christ. What does our Lord, what does St. Paul tell the young St. Timothy? And taken to heart by the great St. Anthony. Preach the word in season and out of season. Be instant. Don't wait. Be instant. Be, be, preach the word in season and out of season. And be instant in them. In season and out of season. Reprove. Entreat. Rebuke. In all patience and doctrine. Sometimes we will reprove. We will say, Thou art a heretic. Thou art a state of moral sin. Thou art on the path to hell. Thou art condemned. Very often, Padre Pio, for instance, in his great confessional, had the vision of souls. A man would come into the confessional. And they would wait hours and hours and hours. Come to the confessional to say to Padre Pio, the great saint who could read hearts. And they would say, I, There is no hope for me, Father. And he would encourage them and treat them. He said, No, you, can, you, you will be able to overcome your sins. The next person came in. And Father Pio, before he could get down, get out! I've been waiting five hours. Get out! And that was the confession. Then they had to get out, go back in line, and get in line again. One man had to get in line three times. He was in line for an entire day, and he walked into Padre Pio, knelt down, blessed me, Father, get out! And he got out. He got in line the next day, I told you to get out! Get out! And the third time, he absolved him of his sins. Because it was time to reprove for that man. It was time to retreat, entreat for another man. It was time to rebuke another. He was trying to rebuke and reprove and entreat. To beg another. And so that there was to meet and rebuke. And these things must be done. For we are the administrators of God. In all patience and doctrine. Because what happens is, we preach the word of God. We tell the child, your kid, be good, be good, be good, be good, be good. It doesn't seem to work. But we must be patient. We must be patient. We must be patient. The doctrine must be repeated patiently and patiently and patiently, and not with frustration. If it's time to yell, yell. But yell because it's time to yell, and not because we are angry. And it is time to time time to. But we must we, we do our do, do our preaching and our communication of the truth in season and out of season, in all patience and in doctrine. And then he continues, for there shall be a time. We need to remove that. St. Paul says, there will be a time. So scratch out will. Mm. There is now the time. We are now in the time. St. Paul spoke 2,000 years ago and he said, there will be a time. Remove the word will. 2,000 we are in the time that St. Paul spoke of 2,000 years ago. There will be a time. Scratch it out. There is a time, and we are in that time right now, when they will not endure sound doctrine. So we'll change that to the correct present tense. They do not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, 
They will heal themselves teachers, having itching ears, and will indeed turn away their hearing from the truth. This is our age. We heal ourselves teachers, liars, having itching ears, telling the people what they want to hear, and turning their ears away from the truth. Now St. Paul, the old, old St. Paul, before he's ready to go to heaven, he is telling the young St. Timothy, I am not going to be here on this earth much longer. Your time is coming, and you will see in your own lifetime, as everyone will see. But not only will each individual see this, the whole of culture will see it, the whole of the world will see it. You will see a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. What are you going to do? Be instant. They won't endure sound doctrine, keep preaching sound doctrine. Now this word most especially applies to the great St. Anthony. For it went to the city of Turin. <laughs> And these people were filled with heresy, they were filled with impurity, they were filled with all manner of wickedness, they had the heresy of the, uh, of the Albigensians, and they were filled with great heresy, and they loved their life of impurity, they loved their life of sin, and they liked their heresy. And they made church, St. Anthony went to the city of Turin, and what did he do? He preached, you must turn away from sin, you must go to God, and they walked away from ceasing. I was on the third day of continuous preaching. They would not listen. He did not stop preaching. They all walked away, and they would have a boy guard to see how long he was going. It took shifts. He's still preaching. That insane man is still preaching. It's been two days now. He's still preaching. It's the three days now. And on the third day in the afternoon, he said, All right, I'm done preaching with you imbeciles. With you imbeciles of Turin. And he turned towards the water. And then he commanded, O ye fish, come forth and hear the word of God. And that's when he preached to the fishes. When did he preach to the fishes? After three days of continuous preaching of the truth to the people of Turin who refused to listen. He was instant out of season. He continued to preach. And he continued to preach. And he continued to preach. But they would not listen. And he did not stop. It's like the battle sometimes happens between a father and a son. The battle of the wills. I remember one time my dad told me the battle of the will he had with my oldest brother. I never was disobedient. I was always perfect. But my older brother was not. And he had a very strong will. And he was sitting there at the table one day with five or six years old. Whatever age he was. And he was not being... <laughs> And he just kept doing it. He's out death, and I know he knows it's been a victory for him. I can't do less than this. It'll be a victory for him. And I St. Anthony. He preached, and 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 he preached. And they refused to listen, and refused to listen, and refused to listen, and refused to listen. And then he said to the fishes, and you can imagine with what power he spoke it. Ye the river flowed into the, into, into the sea, the Adriatic Sea, and there were the fishes, and they came up and they lifted their heads out of the water. And he, first thing he said to them, You have no words of the fishes. You have no, you are smarter than these people, and this is what modern man must hear. The fishes have no brains, the animals have no brains, but they're smarter than modern man. They're smarter than the idiots in the modern universities. Therefore Anthony said to them, Ye fishes, you have no brains, and you are better in every way than these. He's preaching to the fishes. And then he gathered all the people of Turin, and they came by the thousands to hear St. Anthony preach. Now this sermon was interesting, because Anthony had already preached to the men of Turin. Therefore it is back to them. He was done preaching to them. And he preached to the fishes. And these idiots of Turin... When St. Anthony preached to them, they didn't listen. But when he preached to the fishes, they all gathered around and listened. And this will happen again in our times. One day we'll have to preach to the fishes. We'll have to preach to those that know nothing of God. Preach to those that have rejected God and are absolutely ignorant of all things, who have no brains. Preach to the insane. And they gathered around and they numbered and they preached to God. The fishes bowed their heads. And they gathered closer and closer to listen to his words. 
And then somebody came and wrote down the sermon of St. Anthony that he was preaching to the fishes. And he spoke of how God loved the fishes. And he spoke of how God protected the fishes. And of the great glory of the fish. Says God made you able to live in water. Whereas these fools, if they go in the water, they will drown. But you can live in water. God is there in water. And when the time of the great anger of God came, and in his anger he punished all men and all animals, and only two of every creature survived upon the earth. But he did not kill you fishes. He alone allowed you to continue to live for many more than two fishes survived the flood. And he explained why. Because of the mercy and the love of God. It wasn't because there was a lot of water in that day. The fact is, the turmoil of the water, the water will destroy the fishes as well as it will destroy men. But he said, God in his mercy preserved you fishes. Thank God that in his wrath, he was angry at all the animals. But he was not angry at you. And he kept your fishes. And then he finished his sermon by saying, the greatest glory of the fish is on the day that our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He walked through the doors to his apostles, and they were not sure if he had really risen from the dead. And they wanted proof that he had risen from the dead. For an angel cannot eat. Only man can eat. Only living flesh can eat. And therefore he said, Do you have something to eat? And they said, We have fish. And they handed to him fish. The greatest is the fish proved to all mankind. And the prince proved to all the, all the angels in all of the world that Jesus Christ truly rose from the dead. This is the greatest glory of the fish to prove the resurrection. And so the fishes are most sacred. And then, of course, the fish in the early time of Christianity doesn't work in our language. In English and Latin doesn't work either. But in Greek, the words of the ictus, the words of the first letters of fish, match the first letters of Christ. And therefore, the early Catholics, the early Christians, in order to, just, to make a sign, that when you walk through any town, the beggars have signs. Little arrows, little sticks on the ground. One time I'm trying to show the signs. And you see a stick laying on the ground, another stick on the ground. This, this stick means go that way for food. Go that way for money. Go that way for this. This place, these people are stupid. They gave me everything that I asked for. And they have all kinds of signs. But we can't understand those signs, but the beggars do. And so what did the Catholics do? The they say made a sign of where we are the followers of Christ. And by drawing a fish, the first of the fish are the letters of our Lord Jesus Christ. The same letters of Christ, the same letters of fish in the Greek language. And therefore the fish became a symbol of our Lord Jesus Christ. A symbol of the Catholic Church in persecution. And to also remember what did our Lord Jesus this also in his sermon. To prove that he is God, what did he do? He reached, he had St. Peter reached down into the water of sin. And he pulled the fish out of the water. And the fish were brought, brought into the boat. And so that the fish symbolized all the just. All those that are going to be saved inside the boat. Who are going to be drawn out of the water of sin. So Anthony was very wise. And Anthony used to speak to our Lord Jesus Christ almost every night. He would go to the altar, to the side of the altar right here in front of the church. He would lock the church. He would go to the altar, and Lord Jesus Christ as a baby, as a young child, would stand on the altar, and he would speak to Anthony. And they would speak all night, Anthony with a child. And there's where he would get his ideas for his sermons, and he loved, he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. And he also, why St. Anthony is a patron of those lost things, is that Anthony used to travel with a book. Of course, priests have their bravery, but he had a little book that he used, was some book written, handwritten book, on how to prepare sermons and, and, and some of the writings of the saints. And he always carried his book with him, and he loved that book. And the devil realized, Anthony's attached to that book. I'm going to take that book from him. And he, therefore the devil came and took the book and hid it from him. And Anthony wept because his book was gone. And he prayed that his book be found and book be brought back. And the, angels, the angel forced Satan himself to bring back the book. Satan was required to bring it back. And therefore he commanded he could bring back all lost things. Even the devil takes something away. The, the, the Anthony will command the devil to bring it back. And hence he's the patron of lost things. But St. Anthony, the great preacher of our faith, the great lover of God, and one time he preached a sermon because there was a, there was a holy bishop in France, in the southern part of France. 
And he said, Anthony, I want you to come and preach to my people because they're not following God. So Anthony came and he preached. But he had two parts of his sermon. In the first part of the sermon, he said, Ye people of this diocese, come back to God. And then he turned to the bishop who was sitting in his fall school and he said, Now, bishop, it's time for me to preach to you. And he was preaching to a good bishop, not a bad one. And he preached to the bishop about his sins. And he preached to the bishop about And the bishop wept and wept in the sanctuary while Anthony preached to him. Good bishop. And he became a better bishop after Anthony's preaching. He preached at the funeral. He did not want to preach at the funeral. But he was required to preach at the funeral. Preaching at the funeral, this man is in hell. He is not in heaven. And he did, he did not read, when you always read the epistle and the gospel of the Mass. Anthony refused to read the epistle of the Mass. He pulled out the sacred scripture and he said, Only one verse. Where a man's heart is, there is his treasure. Where a man's treasure is, there is where his heart is. And that was the only verse he read. And he said, This man's treasure is gold. This man's treasure is wealth. And all of you here in this church who have that as your treasure, you shall be like unto him. You shall be damned. And that was Anthony's sermon. And then he said, Where a man's treasure is, there his heart is. And at the end of the sermon, they finished the burial, and now all the people left. They went to the man's house, the rich man's house. They opened up his treasure chest, and his physical heart was lying on top of the gold. And that's one of the miracles of St. Anthony. His heart had come out of his body. Where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. Anthony was serious. Sometimes he would preach. There would be thousands and thousands of the sermon. And the devil brought a storm. And the rain came. And the rain fell. And when the rain fell, it fell in the shape of a church. The rain came down. And then it went around every person at the sermon, except for those that were not paying attention. Whoever was not paying attention got drenched. <laughs> Whoever was paying attention, they didn't get wet at all. And then there's a famous sermon of St. Saint, Saint Anthony where he was standing and the people came to hear him preach the word of God. Well, he, could not, he, was, he couldn't see the people. So he climbed up into a, into a tree. And in the tree, hanging from the branches, he preached the word. And no matter how many people were there at the sermon, because remember there were no amplification in the very young when he died. But when, when he preached, they could hear him everywhere, and his, heart, his, his, his words penetrated hearts. And they say that no one could find a single sermon of St. Anthony where some soul was not touched, and some soul did not convert, and some soul did not repent. Even the great saints, St. Gregory the Great, preached to a man that was dying. And when he preached to him, the man, and he showed him from the miracle, and he died and went to hell. But Anthony was given special privileges and special powers, so that it never was santo. And there was another saint who was in some place in Italy where Anthony was walking by, and they came to him, I forget the name of the saint, and said, can you please perform this miracle? Can you do this for me? And Jacobus says, why are you asking me? There is Anthony. Ask him. And so they had to go and ask Anthony. And Anthony performed the miracle. And so, those most beloved Anthony, who loved the childhood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who preached the simplicity of the faith of our mother, the holy faith, who preached it in season and out of season, who brought souls back to God, who when he died, his tongue remained incorrupt. So the great Anthony is, is one of the great saints that just transformed the world, and yet he did not live long. It doesn't take much time to change the world. It takes much faith, and it takes much love. And this is what was in the heart of Anthony. And times have not changed. And the world has not changed. If we have much faith and much love inside of us, which is the faith in God and the love of God, then it's possible to transform entire nations and entire cultures and entire wicked world in which we find ourselves. Let us preach the word and live the word in season and out of season. And follow the great example of St. Anthony. And that as he has his heart be inside of us, and thank him, thank him regularly. You know, one of the problems St. Anthony is that whenever you lose something, you always remember to ask him for it. When you find it, you read somebody at Anthony. Anthony, what's that? I've never heard of that before. But then when you lose something, say, Anthony, please, find my car keys. <laughs> and when you find them, you forget about Anthony. Remember this about Anthony. 
He will find your stuff even when you don't remember to thank Him. But if you remember to thank Him, and if you remember to talk to Him often, and you remember to have gratitude to Anthony, and speak to Him, He will protect you time and time again. In all kinds of ways, He will protect you. He has a special power and a special place in heaven. All the saints are loved by God. All the saints have perfect happiness. But they are not all identical one to another. And Anthony holds a very special place in the kingdom of heaven. He truly is the saint, the Il Santo. And so let's talk to him and ask him to help us in all of our needs and be grateful every time he hears our prayers. And so let's bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.